components of the organ. Everything from the console here to the pipes up there, and even taking a look at the inner workings of the instrument. I realized the other day, though, that I've never actually talked about the company that made the organ. There are many fantastic organ builders out there, and so for the next few weeks, we're going to be taking a look at some different organ builders and their work. We'll look at the history of the companies and take a closer look and listen to one specific instrument of theirs. So today we're going to start off right here at First Presbyterian Church with the organ that you are most familiar with. This organ was originally built by Austin Organs Incorporated. I say originally because it's since had work done by another company, but we'll get to that in a little bit. This particular instrument is Austin's Opus 2002, which is a little misleading because the instrument was first constructed in 1937. The Austin Organ Company got started in 1893 by John Turnell Austin. Austin was born in England in 1869 and had musical training at an early age. He also helped his father with his hobby of organ building. After moving to America in 1889, Austin began working at Ferrand and Vody Organ Company in Detroit. During his time there, he developed a new wind chest that would become the hallmark for Austin organs. John Austin would work for several years for two different companies before officially founding the Austin Company with his brother Basil Austin in 1898. In 1899, they would set up shop in Hartford, Connecticut, where, they remains, where the company remains to this day. The Austin Organ Company continued to gain notoriety over the next few years. During the period of 1915 to 1931, the company would produce 1,200 instruments or about 75 per year. With the Great Depression hitting in 1929, though, the company would begin to scale back its production. In 1937, the company was officially purchased by John Austin's nephews and became Austin Organs Incorporated. Interestingly, this is the same year that this organ was built. As I was doing some research on this instrument, I found some conflicting information about the original installation. Austin's website states that the instrument was a three-manual, 38-stop organ. However, the Organ Historical Society website says the original instrument was a two-manual organ with only 16 stops. The organ was moved to the church's new sanctuary in 1955. At this point, the OHS database states that it was expanded into a three-manual, 41-rank instrument, which would be concurrent with Austin's information. The instrument has been expanded and altered over the years, with final work being done by Austin in 2002, which is another reason why the opus number is confusing because Austin's opus numbers are not done by year. In 2010, the organ was given an overhaul and a new console by the Lauk Pipe Organ Company, which brought the instrument to five divisions, swell, great, choir, pedal, and antiphonal, four manuals, 61 stops, and 53 ranks. Incidentally, a rank is a set of pipes with a specific sound, while a stop is what activates those pipes. Often, a rank of pipes is used on different divisions, such as the grate and the pedal, and so it would have two separate stops, but would still only be one rank. Conversely, you can also have cases where multiple ranks are controlled by one stop, so the terms get a little confusing in there. So there's a little bit of the history of this instrument. There is one feature that I do want to highlight before we finish up today. I mentioned earlier that John Austin developed a unique wind chest that would become the standard for Austin organs. At age 23, Austin developed what was known as the Universal Air Chest System. This system allowed most, if not all, of the pipes on the organ to be supplied with air by one single wind chest. This allowed for even distribution of pressure to the pipes, which makes a more unified sound. The other feature of this system is that it allows easy access to the mechanics of the organ, the parts that actually allow the pipes to sound. I've actually shown this off in several videos, and I'll include links so you can see this particular feature in action. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you've all heard this instrument before, so for the sake of time, we'll skip that part for today. 
If this is the first video of mine that you've seen and want to hear the instrument in action, please be sure to check out my Disney covers or my classical pieces. Next week, we are headed to Pittsburgh, PA to take a look at my favorite organ builder, Cassavant. Please be sure to check it out. I hope that you have enjoyed this video today. If you did, please be sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. If you haven't already, I would encourage you to subscribe and make sure you click that little notification bell so that you can stay up to date on all my latest posts. Be sure to follow me on social media, and if you'd like to help support this channel, I would encourage you to consider becoming one of my Patreons. You can find links to all these sites down in the description. Thanks for watching. See you real soon.